Hello everyone, let's discuss about the major controlling, regulatory, and communicating system in the body. And this is what we call the nervous system. In short, our nervous system is the body's command center. There are two main parts of the nervous system. First is the central nervous system made up of the brain and the spinal cord. Second is the peripheral nervous system made up of nerves that branch off from the spinal cord and to extend all the parts of the body. This is neuron. This is the basic working unit of the brain. The function of the neuron is to transmit information to other nerve cells. This is called also the tiny nerve cells or the nervous system cells. I want you to focus here in myelin sheet. It covers the neurons. The function of the myelin sheet is to release impulse. These are the some types of nervous system disorder. First is the stroke, Parkinson's, and the multiple sclerosis, and the spinal cord injury. What is stroke? It is an illness which part of the brain loses its blood supply. It is also called a brain attack. It happens in one of two ways. First type is the ischemic stroke, which the artery is black. The reason of this is the buildup of plaques, also known as the atherosclerosis. The second one is the hemorrhagic stroke, which the artery is ruptured. The brain is bleeding. The example of this is the aneurysm and the arterovenous malformations. We all know that the stroke is very dangerous and deadly. It is the number five killer and leading cause of disability in America. The high blood pressure is the number one risk factor. This sleep apnea is also known as silent stroke. When your breathing stops and starts while you sleep, the use of drugs will increase the risk of blood clots, like taking cocaine, amphetamines, and heroin. These are the signs and symptoms of stroke numbness or weakness in the arm, paralysis, confusion, stirring speech, and so on. These are the hallmark signs of stroke, the word fast. We should check the face, the arm, the speech, and the time. When we notice the signs and symptoms, we will immediately seek medical attention. You know, every minute counts. The longer a stroke goes untreated, the greater potential of brain damage and disability. So let's always remember the word fast. These are the management of stroke. First, the medication to break up the blood clots and the rehabilitation therapies in order to restore the optimal health, well-being of the patient and lifestyle changes. For the nursing assistant role, we will always assist the patient on their activity daily living, the bathing, eating, uh, reminding, turning the patient, hygiene, assisting and supporting, the BERTAS acronym. What is Parkinson's? It is caused by a loss of nerve cells in the part of the brain called the substantia nigra. If you lose too many neurons, you may develop permanent traceability. And if the neurons don't work, you will have a total breakdown in the brain. These are the other names of Parkinson's. So this is the brain region affected by Parkinson's disease. This is the substantia nigra. This is very small and the production of dopamine happens here. Substantia nigra produces dopamine. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter which acts as a chemical messenger between neurons. The main responsibility of dopamine is the normal muscle movement and the reward system. As you can see here, when a person have a Parkinson's disease, the release of dopamine are too low. This is the normal. Many researchers believe that the risk factors of the Parkinson's disease is a combination of genetic factors and environmental factors, especially those people who are exposed in toxins. And these are the hallmark signs of Parkinson's. First one is called cogwheel rigidity. 
there is a inflexible or stiffness of the muscles. Shuffling gait, it's an abnormal walking short steps. Resting tremors, if your arms, hands, fingers, legs are shaking even when they are at rest. That's resting tremors. Mycographia. It is an abnormal small handwriting. Very small. And these are the other signs and symptoms of Parkinson's disease. So these are the management. First and foremost, let's provide safety because of their muscles rigidity. Oxygen, because our body have muscles rigidity, as the disease progresses, there will be lung rigidity as well. That's why the chest expansion will be limited. And mechanical ventilation, it's rated also to the oxygen. Then encourage to take medications. So levodopa is a drug of choice in order to increase the dopamine levels of the patient. And also, the role of the nursing assistant is the assisting the activity daily living, the BERTAS acronym. What is multiple sclerosis? It is caused by your immune system mistakenly attacking the brain and nerves. In this disorder, your immune system attacks the myelin sheet. This is the healthy myelin sheet, meaning to say the nerve sent and received quickly. So this is the picture of the damaged myelin sheet, meaning to say the impulses are slow or there will be a delay impulses. So I will give you an example. When you spank your hands, ouchie. So this is the normal myelin sheet and this is the damaged myelin sheet. Ouch! So there's a delayed impulse. These are the risk factors of multiple sclerosis. Infectious disease when the person infected by the Epstein-Barr virus. This is also common in female, especially for those pregnant. And the impact of environmental factors if you are low sun exposure and lack of vitamin D. White rays, those are the Northern European. These are the hallmark signs of multiple sclerosis. First is the scanning speech. There will be a long process of syllables and words. So example, sa Apollo, where are you now? Like that. When you say intention tremors, there's a purposeful intention movements. For example, if I will get this ball pen, so this is your hand. Then, release, like that. Next, the nystagmus. This is a rapid blinking of the eye. Like that. And the other signs are this. Diplopia, a double vision. Dysphagia, a difficulty of swallowing. Respiratory depression, because there is less oxygen going to the cell. Decrease GIT and GUT, there will be constipation and oligoria. Ataxia, there's a lack of voluntary coordination of the muscle movements. These are the management. First is the corticosteroids to reduce inflammation and to suppress the immune system. Oxygen because of respiratory depression and also the mechanical ventilation. Next is the encouraged muscle relaxant. Baclofen is the drug of choice to relieve spasms. So always remember the acronym CAM. For the Parkinson's, it's SAM. And also, don't forget the role of the nursing assistant is assisting again the ADL of the patient. And the BERTAS acronym. Spinal cord injury is the damage to the tight bundle of cells and nerves that sends and receives signals from the brain to and from the rest of the body. It causes also paralysis in most of the body. So this is the difference of normal spinal cord and the injured spinal cord. As you can see, the nerve cells are destroyed. It could be partially or complete tears of spinal cord. These are the risk factors of spinal cord injury. It happens on different ways. And it also 
have a different types of spinal cord injury. The number one risk factor is falls. These are the types of spinal cord injury. It could be complete spinal cord injury, meaning to say it's permanent damage. And incomplete spinal cord injury, it's incomplete spinal cord damage. We have 31 spinal nerves in the spinal cord. Once there will be a spinal cord injury, there will be affected areas in our body. So these are the affected area. If the cervical 1 to cervical 4 is injured, the affected area is the diaphragm. Cervical 5 to thoracic 1 is the arms. And thoracic 2 to thoracic 6 is the chest. Thoracic 7 to thoracic 12 is the abdomen. L1 to L5 is the legs. S1 to S3 is the GAT and GUT. And S4 to S5 is sex organs. And these are the hallmark signs of spinal cord injury. Loss of movement, loss of feeling, pain, or discomfort. And these are the management of having a spinal cord injury. First and foremost is the emergency care. Since it is emergency, it will be treated right away. Next is medication like corticosteroids and NSAIDs. Next is the immobilization. We should prevent the head and body parts of the patient from any movement. Surgical management is the decompression and the stabilization of spine. And lastly, the rehabilitation. Example of this is the activity-based therapy to retrain the nervous system to recover the specific motor task. And again, the role of the nursing assistant is to assist the activity daily living. And that's it. I hope you learned from this topic, nervous system. Thank you for listening. Bye!